We're here today in the University of Salford where there's been a Chaplaincy Development Day and I'm joined by my esteemed guest, Sheikh Salim Sidat from Blackburn. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam, Sheikh Adam. Nice to meet you. I believe you're an Imam and Muslim chaplain based in Blackburn. Yes, that's correct. I'm the chaplain at Blackburn College, which is a further and higher education college, which has 15,000 students and provides education all the way from A-levels to a master's degree. Uh, so do you mind me asking, are you originally from uh, Lancashire? Yes, I'm born and bred in Blackburn and that's where I've lived for my whole life. So the work that you do in uh, Blackburn College, uh, I'm assuming this is going to be with a lot of young people because of the nature of the education. There. Yes, predominantly the students are in their teens mm. uh, and you have some students in their early 20s so yeah it's um, working predominantly with the youth so one one big challenge which lots of people have today not just within the muslim community but without is connecting with younger people uh, how, how do you manage that that's definitely a challenge connecting with younger people because we we don't always and we can't always speak and appreciate the level they are at. and therefore it, my the challenge for me is how do I connect with students? How do I empathize with them and find ways of enhancing their student experience? And one way I do that is rather than expecting them to come to me, I try and go to them. Mm. So what, what kind of places do you go to them? Where, where do you find them? So I try and find out the kinds of places where they hang out. So they may hang out in the canteen or near the pool table or in the common room or in the garden outside. And then I informally spend time with them and um, familiarise myself with the students um, to such an extent that at times uh, I'm able to break the ice and therefore be able to provide pastoral care where hitherto I would not be able to. So what is a Muslim chaplain? A Muslim chaplain will have a different function in different contexts. But in education itself, there'll be a degree of diversity as well. As for my role as a Muslim chaplain, there's three parts to it. The first part is to provide uh, um, worship um, needs, to fulfill the worship needs of students. So for example, I will lead the Friday prayers but if they are non-Muslim students, I also have a responsibility towards them. And in order to fulfill that responsibility, I have contacts with the Interfaith Forum locally, which represents the six major world religions. And when need be and when requested by students from other faiths, I can put them in touch with their respective communities so that they can provide the worship, their worship needs. Uh, do you think that's one of the benefits of working outside the mosque setting in that you are able to widen uh, your your links and your relationships with people from different backgrounds. Absolutely. So, so there, there, there's an experience that I have of working as an imam in the community that an imam in the mosque may not have. Mm. So the imam in the mosque has a particular function which they um, fulfil um, effectively many a time, but that function is different to the function people like myself as chaplains fulfil. And what benefits have you experienced working with people from different faith, faith backgrounds? So one of the things you learn is that people have different frames of reference, people have different worldviews, people have different values, and therefore you start to appreciate these, kind, these kinds of differences and the diversity that exists uh, in relation to these things. And as a result of that, you learn to become more tolerant and respectful towards diversity. Mm. Speaking a little more about your interaction with members of different faith communities and the interfaith work you're involved in, what do you think are the biggest challenges for Muslims uh, being involved in interfaith work? The challenge, the, the ma major challenge in interfaith 
is how can you hold on strongly to your own faith whilst engaging with people who don't share your beliefs and your religion. That's the biggest challenge probably when engaging in interfaith. And so in terms of solutions, so how could somebody who might have been invited to an interfaith event to take part, what kind of advice would you give that person then for being involved in, in, in this work? First and foremost, to be grounded in their own religious knowledge. So religious literacy, understanding one's own tradition, understanding one's own background, understanding one's own culture is of utmost importance. And then once one is confident within their religion, within their culture, within their beliefs, then to engage with the other is much more fruitful. Mm. And uh, it's much, and therefore one can engage with the other whilst holding on to one's own faith and being respectful. So you're a, you're a Lancashire man, I believe you were born and brought up uh, in the town of Blackburn. Do you mind me asking, do you have a favourite place in Blackburn and, and why? The, my favourite place in Blackburn is Queen's Park and the reason why Queen's Park is close to my heart is, be, it, is because it brings back childhood memories from the days when I, I, my granddad used to take me along with my sister to the park and we used to go on, uh, go on the swings and feed the ducks. And it always um, has that special place in my heart as a result. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to go in, uh, back to the uh, Islamic background and your, your Islamic training. I believe you're a qualified alim, uh, which means that you did seven years of study to, to become a qualified alim. Yes, so I studied um, seven years um, traditional Islamic sciences for seven years, including the Quran uh, and the Hadith, the prophetic traditions and fiqh, um, Islamic jurisprudence, uh, along with Arabic and some of the other sciences of Islam. You know, seven years to devote to those sciences for somebody in this country, within this context, can seem like a, a lot of time. That's a big investment to make. Are you, are you glad you, you made that decision? Absolutely. The benefit of what I did, which is many, is slightly different to what other imams do, is that I did not do it on a full-time basis. Okay. I did it on a part-time basis. So I was working in the NHS at the time, mm. during the day, and I used to go and study um, at the madrasa um, um, in, in the evening. Back to the uh, other grassroots work which you're involved in, I, I also believe you're, you teach Islamic studies at a local seminary as well? Yes, so I've started teaching uh, an in-house degree programme, so it's the first two years of a degree programme in-house in a local seminary. So the attempt is, the aim is to provide and to complement the traditional studies that the students go through uh, along with something um, from the Western Academy. Yeah, so, so you've got students, and what, what age uh, are those students? So we're talking um, post-18. So 18 and onwards. Yes. So outside of the... Tri uh, thank you for your contribution, and may Allah give you the best of rewards for all the hard work you're doing. It's been an absolute honour uh, to spend time with you. Likewise. Mm -hmm.